Hah? Otomatik masuk ke sini pula. The speaker is Izzuddin Ismail from Jom Launch Asia, moderated by Dr. Leilani Mohamad Noor from Bina Pavo. Hello and good morning. I'm Leilani Mohamad Noor uh, from Bina Pavo a family business advisory firm based in Shah Alam. And with me today is Izuddin Ismail. He is the founder and organizer to JOM Launch Asia and JOM Web, uh, mostly focused for programmers, as well as the CTO for Kido Care, an on-demand platform for babysitters as well as families. Yeah, and uh, this session that we have today is called uh, Amplify Our Virtual Events Here to Stay. What have we learned from the pandemic? Yeah, so I'm going to go straight to asking Izudin the first question. So Izudin, right. um, yes. perhaps you uh, can take my first question. And my first question is, how does online summit or conferences provide that personal experience, especially when the attendees are not able to see the body language and even eye contact. All right. All right. I think uh, uh, if I may go back about how our virtual uh, conference, our virtual event came about was because Jom Launch has been doing this since 2015, I think. So um, the first two years, we did twice. We did two uh, Jom Launches event. Uh, and then the second year, we did another two. And then subsequently, it's, it's becoming too, a bit too much. We did only once a year. So this year is uh, 2021. is the ninth Jom launch. And it's going to be the second one that we are doing it um, virtual. Uh, but initially, we didn't really plan for it. When pandemic came, when lockdown came last year, we even cancelled the whole thing. But uh, Jom launch and Jom web, be, is, is kind of like a community, right? So every year at Jom Launch, we showcase 20 projects, 20 ICT community projects by the programmers just to celebrate and showcase what our local talents can do. So at the very least, what we planned was, what, at least what I initially planned, was to at least have this 20 projects showcased without any uh, actual uh, virtual event or without any um, fancy, fancy stuff or at least just an announcement. These are your 20 projects uh, from the community this year. But one thing led to another. We actually did an event. And on top of that, the first time we ever did Jom Launch Asia with um, international speakers. Um, and so that's how it came about. And talking about this um, personal um, experience. Uh, what's the word again? Personal experience, right? Yeah. What came to mind last year uh, what I thought about was uh, engagement. Mm. Uh, when we want to have this online, how can we still keep people engaged? So uh, among the things that we did, and we are still doing it this year, even it being a um, virtual event, there are some elements that we try to add on to the virtual event to get big um, to help spread the word, to get our participants excited. For example, we um, we still send out T-shirts. Mm. Previously, when when uh, we had the physical event, they pay for a ticket um, uh, earlier, and then when they come, they collect the T-shirts. Now, with online, they pay for a ticket. We ship out the T-shirt as soon as we can. And we try to do that as early as we can before the event so that people will start wearing it, They'll start showcasing, do selfies, online uh, sharing, social media sharing, and all mm. those stuff. And people do get excited seeing another another friend wearing the t-shirt. Um, uh, it kind of helps in our promotion as well. Mm. You see? <laughs> and also we have um, quizzes along the way with prizes, 
we have apa lagi eh like this year what we plan to do we're going to have like a QR code game um where they can um scan each other's QR code uh they can scan the exhibitors QR code and also QR code during the webinar itself right so that all those QR code um collected will give them points Mm. And towards the end, we're gonna have kind of like a winner and also prizes. So, a, a lot of prizes, a lot of quizzes, uh, t-shirts going out. <laughs> okay, yeah, so, so wonderful. So you're doing all this mm -hmm. um, to not just create the excitement before the event, mm -hmm. you know, but also during the 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 virtual event. Yeah, because right. I hear you know other than the fact that the t-shirt creates excitement before the event, mm -hmm. but the game with the QR code and you know making you know and people are basically competitive and I'm assuming programmers are very competitive. Yeah, so yeah, you know they are making sure that they are um, on board. You know um, that means they are engaging during the virtual event. So does this help with the so-called retention rate? of your virtual event you know as opposed to a physical event whereby people may loiter around and get out of the hall and go to the lounge but how does that help with a virtual event in terms of retention rate okay when you say retention meaning retention during the the the, the talk right? right yes right okay um it's a good thing that we use admin <laughs> Uh, uh, we have all those stuff. We have the quizzes. You need to pay attention when the quiz come up. You some of the answers are during the 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 webinar itself, right? During the video conference. So if they did not pay attention, uh, they may not be able to answer. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's one thing. And we also have you know with Amit, um, you have the chat box on the side as a sidebar, mm -hmm. and the chat is happening all throughout the talk. Right, the, 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 uh, all throughout the session, and you can see how engaged they are by the frequency of view checks coming up. Right, okay. Uh, but when it comes to the actual loitering and loitering, <laughs> yes, <laughs> um, yes, we always have this in the physical event. They duduk belakang day one, they sembang sembang kan. Well, um, some some uh, participants are just excited to meet each other to meet uh, each other and and talk and uh, catch up and stuff like that um we on on emmy you know there's two uh, formats in emmy there's the meetup format and there's also the conference format uh, with the conference format even though the video conference the talk is happening the session is happening the lounge is always open and there's uh there are tables and people can sit and when more than one people sit on the table uh it launches this video conference interface and they can chat with each other so basically um it's it's when it comes to loitering there's nothing much you can do about it <laughs> Uh, but, but people least, can still engage um, outside right, of the hall. Yeah? Um, right, but correct, at least it, it, that is one element that is somewhat similar to how um, a physical event is. Uh, correct, so yeah. by the end of the day, it's kind of like a good thing though, even though it's a, it's a virtual event. So I don't mind. At least previously, when you are in a hall, Jorang sembang kat belakang, they do make a little bit of noise, right? But now yeah. they can sembang elsewhere. They don't interrupt the session. Correct. Yeah. So I I guess that's a plus point also. Yeah, because the the session can carry on and and people who wants to have that private conversations can go to um the lounge for your feature in Emmy. Yeah. Um and uh, I'd like to share also, you know, when uh, when Bina Pavo used Emit right. last month, yeah, for the Asia Pacific Family Business Summit, um, you are uh, uh, right whereby we actually get more participants, um, not just in Malaysia but outside of Malaysia. Oh, but right. at the same time, it also you know um, helps them to network um, at the lounge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so as opposed to you know just being in one session and not being able to move around. So as you said, loitering can also be good because it helps them to you know network and and, and collaborate and and speak about uh, possible um, collaboration together. Um, I want to touch on another feature, um, Izudin, on the emit, which is the virtual booth. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So this is with regards to how do you get sponsors. 
uh, and exhibitors yeah um to to come on board uh, uh -huh. to support your event yeah uh -huh. uh, because it's slightly different from a, a physical event so how uh -huh. do you get sponsors and exhibitors to come on board uh okay well initially there are some resistance even for ourselves right the, uh, last year was the first time we ever did a virtual event um, we don't know how participants are going to take it. Are we going to fill up the seats? <laughs> can? Are we going to get participants? Mm. So people say, Allah, virtual, tak nak, kan? I want to go and makan-makan. I want to go <laughs> and uh, talk and chat with friends. Can? Uh, because when it's a virtual event, there's, there's, you don't get all that. So we were really worried about the numbers that, that uh, we're going to get. But fortunately, we do um, get a good number. Um, mm. lepas tu when it comes to the sponsors actually because you, you need the numbers to convince the sponsors correct yes right so uh, we and and normally you start getting you start approaching your sponsors before you start even selling the, the tickets so um, fortunately we've done uh, a few events even physically mm. kan? Um, that is somehow an indicator lah. We, can, we can still show those numbers uh and with the and things are going to be different especially much like last year it was the first time ever we did it uh but we still showcase what their booth is going to be like uh and they are also there's there's worries about whether or not people are going to come to the booth or not mm -mm. right uh it's a good thing that um you see emit has been improving uh, compared to last year and this year the booths are a lot more um lively and mm. there are more features where the exhibitors themselves can customize their booth they can have videos on the booth they can have their own background clickable hotspots maybe they want to have people click on and uh, a button and go to their website click on a button to go to fill up a form and stuff like that and when you see the whole exhibition area you see all these booths there's also indicator if they are actually somebody mending the booth mm. right because they didn't have that before that before this, right. they I think uh, um, I started seeing it when we started to uh, put together our admit for job launch this year. Uh, so uh, things are a lot easier this year though. When we there's showing... more, there's more features, yeah, more features right. on admit ah. to help not just the exhibitors but mm -hmm. also to help the participants of the of the event, yeah, to right. to communicate at the virtual booth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of course, when approaching um, sponsors, you need your packages, mm -hmm. how much uh, they, you want from them, what they're going to get. So you need to get all those prepared. Lah. Okay. Uh, and at least for us, because we've been jo doing Jom Launch for a few years already, uh, honestly, most of our sponsors, uh, we get a lot of smaller packages, smaller mm -hmm. sponsors. And these smaller packages are actually our friends and network which are also community members themselves and they are doing just a little bit better with their own business and they're willing to um, uh, help the community so at least that's for us <laughs> yeah okay so um uh, you are absolutely right uh, izudin you know at the end of the day it is our friends yeah that supports us um, mm -hmm. our event and uh, friends like these are meant to be kept <laughs> yeah and uh, betul lah um uh, in business, we have we have to help each other, yeah. Okay, so going to the last question, uh, Isudin, huh? um, maybe your final thought on: Do you think the virtual event is here to stay, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or how would it, you know, morph into something which is a hybrid or something like that? Yeah, what's your probably opinion? Probably so, probably so. I think, like, uh, previously you've never done virtual events, and then suddenly mm -hmm. you started doing it. And even if Katala lockdown and quarantine all eases out, uh, up, uh, things started to get a lot easier for people to move around, and you are allowed to do physical event, uh, you people may still want to have a, a, a virtual event. Uh, because I think for some, uh, at least for Jom Launch, right? Uh, there mm. are people who've been who've been um, within the community but never had the, the opportunity to actually come. Because of uh, distance, our mm. friends from Sabah, Sarawak, ada juga from Kelantan, Terengganu, kan? They where they feel it's it's uh, far for them to spend on and travel and uh, apa ni, accommodation, hotel mm. for to come to Kuala Lumpur 
or uh, Susan Jaya when we had it, when we had it in, in Magic. Kan? Um, so we may want to still maintain some aspect of the virtual event to at least for, for our far away friends. Lah, kan? And uh, doing this, starting from last year, we also had the opportunity to host um, international speakers, mm. uh, which is um, harder and more costlier. If to you bring them out. over? Right, right. <laughs> yes, even yes. Our, even our, it does cost us money though, because we, we do send out a bit of token and... Um, and even though they are international speakers, we do send them out the t-shirts as well, our goodie mm-hmm. box. Um, we hope uh, upon the, the box reach them in time before the event, right? But maybe not as much as to host them physically in Kuala Lumpur. Initially, we did plan on uh, flying them in. Uh, I, I looked for nearby uh, speakers within the Southeast Asia region, kan? those were my initial target. We had one from Japan, mm-hmm. uh, a British, but resides in Thailand or something like that. And <laughs> yeah, that's interesting, you know, because when we had ours, uh, it was meant for Asia Pacific, but we had people from Italy oh. who wants oh. to join the event, you know. Um, and I guess, as you said, you know, uh, the, the, the fact that it's virtual, it allows not just, um, of course, speakers, but also definitely participants from other parts of the region to join um, the, the virtual summit. Yeah, so um, I think I, I'm going to wrap it up. Yeah, um, so at the end of the day, um, we believe, yeah, Isudin, I, I hope you're with me, yeah, and I believe you are with me, that uh, the virtual event is here to stay, but with a little bit of adjustment, definitely people want or still wants to have um, that that physical engagement and physical contact, you know, because that's what we are, you know, we want to converge and and, and be together. But uh, no doubt, um, uh, we also believe that, um, you know, the virtual event can actually be an added value to any event. Yeah, right? Yeah, and um, I I like the fact that you said that, um, you know, with a virtual event, you can have... Um, excitement going, you know, um, sending t-shirts and people can start talking about it before the event and have all these games with QR codes and so on and so forth. Yeah, um, not just to get the excitement going, uh, but also to get um, the retention rate yeah, uh, within the, the virtual event. So with that, um, Izudia and Ismail, thank you so much for your session today. Uh, for, thank for being you for with having us. me. Okay. This and, one still uh, has been fun. Yeah, it has been fun. Thank you so much. Yeah, and and uh, I hope to see you again. So that's the end of our session. Thank you, and I uh, hope we get to see you again one day physically. Bye bye. Okay, guys, so I really like that session. Apakah yang kita telah belajar dari pandemic? Important questions and I think Izudin shared really good insights there. And I think this just highlights how online event platforms like AirMeet can play a big role for your business and your events going forward in the new normal, whether you're an organizer, a sponsor or an exhibitor, exciting stuff happening in this space for sure. All right, guys, um, of course, we have our poll. It's poll time again. Tell us what you thought about the panel discussion. Was it useful? Was it relevant? Now, we will see you in the next panel.